horizon coordinate system in horizon coordinate system we have three components with which we can define this coordinate system consider a celestial sphere and horizon circle which is a great circle therefore zenith and nadi can be placed on the celestial sphere and we can also write celestial north pole and celestial south pole the angle between celestial north pole and south pole is d minus 5 so the three components which are required to define the two coordinates of the horizon coordinate system which are azimuth capital a and altitude these two angle can be defined using three great circle they are horizon circle this circle is the horizon circle second vertical circle the vertical circle is the one which join zenith and nadi and it must pass through the star whose coordinate we wish to define let's say this is the star so this circle is known as vertical circle so this vertical circle passes from start from zenith passes from star and then uh, passes from the zenith uh, nadi sorry and then again goes back to the zenith so again this is a great circle the third component or the great circle with which we can uh, define the two angle azimuth and altitude is observer meridian so observer meridian is this green circle is also one of the great circle so this is the observer meridian let us define the two angle azimuth and altitude just pick either north as a reference point or south as a reference point which lies on the observer meridian let's take south as the reference point so starting from the south move toward the vertical circle on which the star lies so this angle measured from the center of the sphere this angle is known as azimuth angle Whereas altitude is on the vertical circle at the point of cross section of the horizon and the vertical circle. Start from this point of intersection and move toward the star. This angle is known as altitude. Now, if you're moving in the upper hemisphere, then it uh, this altitude is positive, and if you're moving in the lower uh, hemisphere, then this altitude is negative. So these are the two angles: azimuth. And altitude. So, what are the drawback of this? Drawback of this system. Yeah, drawback of this coordinate system. That uh, if you consider the diurnal motion of the star, let's say this is a horizon. If you consider the diurnal motion of the star, diurnal motion of the star represents the 24-hour uh, motion of a star. So if this represents the 24-hour motion of a star, then with the change of the time, obviously the altitude keeps on decreasing. So the altitudes keeps on changing. A1, A2, A3, A4. Similarly, the azimuth angle is also changing. So uh, Due to diurnal motion, azimuth and altitude changes. So this is one of the major drawback, and obviously, uh, this coordinate system A and small a are observer dependent. It's depend upon the location of the observer. So let's consider uh, an an example. So let's consider a question. Locate a star with the horizon coordinate system with azimuth equals to 30 degree and let's say west 
and amplitude is equal to plus 60 degree. So here is the answer. Let draw a celestial sphere, draw a horizon, and draw a vertical circle. Now let's consider this uh, as the south and this as the north. And let's consider south as the ref uh, reference point. Let's I say that this represents west and this represents east. So making it 30 degree west, that means starting from south and move toward uh, west. So by moving uh, 30 degree, it would be like this. So this angle would be 30 degree. This is the azimuth. And as far as altitude is concerned, from this point of intersection, start move in upward direction by angle of 60 degrees. So we have star at this location. And you always remember that the angles are always measured from the center of the sphere. Thank you for your time.